Hello guys, I've been using my iPad Pro a lot lately, so perhaps today I thought I would give my take on using the iPad to study. Despite the many iPad videos out there, I hope that I can provide you some useful insights as to whether you should use the iPad in your studies. The iPad that, I come, that I'm currently using is the iPad Pro 11 inch 2020 version. What I'll be going through are mainly the benefits of the iPad as well as some slight cons of it, general note taking on the iPad as well as my conclusive thoughts. So let's get started. So first up, let me just talk more about the benefits of the iPad. I believe that there are numerous benefits, but I'll just list down the more notable ones. First up is definitely the fact that you can combine both writing as well as typing. So first up, let me just talk about typing. I feel that typing is definitely a lot faster and takes way less effort as compared to writing. But the problem with typing is that you have the tendency to write down a lot of the stuff the lecturer has did. And the problem with this is that Typing doesn't really encourage you to digest the information that the lecturer has said and as such you will end up with a lot of irrelevant information that may not be, ne may not be necessary for you to write down. On the other hand, writing is definitely a lot slower as well as tedious but the fact that it requires more effort actually encourages you to pay more attention to the lecture and note down the more important parts. So by combining both writing as well as typing it allows you to be more flexible when jotting down your notes because you can use either method when time calls for it. For typing, I just use this Logitech K380 keyboard and for writing, I use the Apple Pencil right here. So rather than carrying a whole stack of notes around, which can be pretty heavy, all you need to do is carry your iPad around as well as your keyboard if you find the need to bring one. So for example, if I were to have an exam, I will usually need to carry this large file around as well as the other additional readings, which can be really heavy to be honest. But with the iPad, I can keep my readings, notes, as well as all the essential stuff inside, which is a lot more convenient as well as less taxing to carry. There's also a lower tendency of me forgetting to bring my stuff because almost everything that I need can be stored on the iPad. So when you want to physically find a page of your notes, First, you need to get the right file, then after that, you need to find the right chapter, and then after finding the right chapter, you have to find the right page to find that particular piece of note. And all these add up can be quite tedious and cost a lot of time in the long run. But on the iPad, just like a PC, you can, you can classify your documents based on folders, and you're just a few clicks away from finding the document that you want. If you can't find your document or you have too many, you can also use the search function and for, you, for you to find the documents that you want. So as you can see, just by giving a good search, I can already see what I want to find. So I'm already kind of deep into this Apple ecosystem because I already have a Mac as well as an iPhone, which I'm using to record this video right now. So adding the iPad into my workflow was a very seamless action for me. I also found AirDrop to be a really powerful tool, because all I need to do is just click AirDrop for my document, then just find someone to share with and it will transfer over to that particular device almost instantly. If I were to send my documents to a non-Apple device, then I'll probably have to open up my Gmail and send it to myself, or put it in my drive and download it from there, which I find quite a hassle to be honest. So having the AirDrop was a very big plus point for me in getting the iPad Pro. I also found the battery life of the iPads to be really quite amazing and they last very long. I haven't really faced a moment where I had to scramble to charge my iPad and get work done, even though I'm on full brightness pretty much throughout the whole day. I think as long as you get a good charge the day before, the iPad should last you throughout the whole day without any issue, as long as you are not doing too much of intensive work. Finally, I want to talk about the dual screen feature of the iPad. With this dual screen feature, you can open up another app, be it your Google Sheets or your Safari, and you can engage in both apps at the same time. I find this especially useful when you need to focus on both apps or need to transfer work around both of these apps. So for example, let's say you want to search out on maybe plant cell. So we just need to open up Safari, put it to the side here, and I already beforehand search out on plant cell. So even you can always just drag a diagram towards this good notes inside right here. So just click on the diagram that you want, just and hold it down, and you can drag the diagram towards good notes. 
or any other note taking yet. From there, it's very useful for you to continue your annotation so you, can, so you can write down more stuff inside. You can even adjust the size difference if you need to. And if you don't need to use it anymore, you can just drag it away and it will disappear. If you don't want it to be side by side screen, you can also drag it out and hover it above your document. So I found this dual screen feature to be really useful in helping you do your work more efficiently. So next up, let's talk a little bit about the cons. I definitely feel that Apple products are kinda expensive, but I must admit that most Apple products tend to last long if you can take good care of them. And there's also the risk of losing your information if the iPad gets damaged, but you can also try to mitigate this by using your drives, such as your iCloud or your Google Drive, so you can at least have a backup storage of your information. So having bought the iPad, I also bought some note-taking apps, which are Notability and Good Notes. I bought both because I wanted to try both of them out, and now I personally need more towards Good Notes. I'll probably do a video regarding Good Notes versus Notability, but for now, let me move on to talk more about note-taking on the iPad in general. So note-taking apps on the iPad generally allow for a lot of customization. You can choose between landscape or portrait for the paper, choose between different templates, as well as the color of the paper. So after you're done creating your notebook, you can put it into different folders that have created for better classification. Classifying your notes may work differently across different note-taking apps. So for example, in Notability right here, you will store your notes according to headers as well as subheaders, which is different compared to good notes. So note-taking apps on the iPad come with the very basic tools like the pen, the eraser, as well as the highlighter. You can choose from different colors and so as different thickness to suit your needs when you, when you take your notes. It also allows you to insert pictures, which you can drag around, as well as type any text whenever you want. And as I mentioned previously, if you need to refer to other apps or documents when you do your work, or just do some research, you can always open up the dual screen feature, so you can search for whatever you need. And if you need to bring pictures over, you can also do so, by just clicking it and dragging it over. I find that having this freedom to customize as well as having so many tools at your hand really makes taking notes on the iPad very convenient as well as engaging. Now that's all that I have to share about starting with the iPad. I hope that this video has been useful for you. If you are wondering which iPad to get, I would say that if you are using it just for pure styling purpose like note taking, then the iPad base model or the Air should be good enough for you. You don't need to spend the extra money for the iPad Pro. But if you want to do something more with it, like maybe content creation and video editing, then you may want to consider getting the iPad Pro for the extra power. Some other differences also include these right here. The 120Hz ProMotion refresh rate, the quad speakers on the iPad Pro, as well as the fact that there may be a very slight delay in registering between writing on the iPad and the iPad actually registering your stroke as a result of the promotion. So if you find that these features may affect you, you may want to go down physically to the store itself and try the iPads out. But of course, do wear a mask and stay safe. In my subsequent videos, I'll probably be talking about the note-taking apps on the iPad, but I do have video ideas coming up regarding things like productivity, time management, dealing with procrastination, and so much more. So you can stay tuned for these. If you have anything else that you guys want me to share about, feel free to leave it in the comment section down below. So that's all I have for today. If you like the video, please do drop a like and subscribe, and I'll do my best to keep more study content coming. Thanks for watching and see you!